Would you ever go to a remote destination without GPS? You know how difficult it can be to reach a deep lesion right next to major blood vessels, a liver dome tumor, a lung, an adrenal gland, or a narrow joint? CT often provides the best images for percutaneous procedures, but so many variables make it difficult. Procedure time is hard to predict. Radiation can be a concern. Above all, accuracy is seldom guaranteed. This is where CT navigation changes the game. Set up in just a few minutes, the radiologist is now in full control and finds the best path to target. With reduced radiation and shortened operating time, procedures become more predictable, making physicians feel more confident, delivering better patient care and improving workflow. So, GPS or Roadmap? CT Navigation by Imactus. The best innovation in the last 10 years in percutaneous interventional radiology. My name is Sally King, and I'm a Clinical Applications Engineer with the MACDIS, and this is our CT Navigation Solution. We are an electromagnetic CT Navigation System with two hardwired components, our electromagnetic emitter, which we call our fiducial, and our electromagnetic receiver, which we call our sensor. Our sensor sits inside of a non-sterile needle holder with a clamp mechanism so that we're able to accommodate gauges ranging 25 to 11. When it comes to navigating with the needle holder, there's four simple movements based on the orientation of your needle holder. Cranial, caudal, lateral, and medial. And the same goes for your angulation. There is no limitation in angulation. When you figure out your area of interest or where you think your entry point may be, you'll secure this fiducial down with a tagoderm on a bony or secure structure so that it does not move. You'll then perform an acquisition scan, being sure to include the fiducial in your field of view. Push that series over to our standalone workstation and to kind of set the room up for you, your workstation is going to be on the opposite side of the table or gantry of the physician so that it's within arm's reach and at eye level throughout the entire procedure. We are a touchscreen interface, so you have the ability to zoom in and zoom out. Our axial view is our constant and the sagittal view based on where the, the orientation of the needle holder will convert to a coronal view for you. You have the ability to touch and drag to change your windowing. Or you can use our presets for soft tissue, bone, and lung. So if I kind of continue down this toolbar, our exit button's up at the top. You have a freeze button, which allows you to freeze the screen at any moment. You can take a screenshot of any image that's up on the system. You have the ability to save a trajectory and hide that trajectory, which once we start to place our needle, we'll get into that a little bit later. Again, we have our presets for soft tissue, bone, and lung, and you also have the option to change your view based on how you like to insert your needles. So when it comes time for the procedure, we've already sent over our scan, and so now we're gonna to start to do our navigating and figure out where we wanna place that needle. In this situation, we're gonna tar target an adrenal gland Okay. So we're going to navigate until we find our axial entry point, and then we're going to adjust on our sagittal view. So if we're okay with this positioning right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this trajectory. I can mark my skin and convert to sterile. So you don't, there's, you're no longer running back and forth through the control room to kind of figure out your pre-planning. It can all be done on the patient in the room. We do have a disposable Navi kit, and inside the Navi kit, there is a tegaderm for you to secure your fiducial down with. There is a grip lock, which allows you to secure your hardwired cables to the drapes. You have a sterile needle holder, which differentiates in color. This is a single use sterile needle holder. And then you have a probe cover, 
which goes on just like any other probe cover would. So once you get that on, we're gonna use our sterile needle holder. And all we would have to do at this moment is come back in and superimpose our blue and our yellow lines. Now before we do that, I want you to take a look at this infinite needle. How the line just continues right there. Well, during the procedure, once you figure out which needle you're going to use, you're gonna place it within the needle holder, making sure that it slides without resistance because we are a linear system. And we're gonna hit this needle button on the bottom left of the screen. So once we click that, we're able to customize any needle, whether it be a 13.9 centimeter or a typically used 15 centimeter needle. We we'll also create a database based off of your most frequently used needles. So we are going to stick with a 15 centimeter. And as you can see, I now have an arrow at the tip of my blue line. If I were to push this needle all the way in and hub it out, that's exactly where my needle tip would be, assuming that we inserted the correct usable length into our system. Okay. So we're going to bring that trajectory back, that saved yellow line, and we're going to kind of repeat those steps again. We're going to superimpose those lines, adjust our axial view, and then adjust our sagittal view. So one tip that we like to say, you know, where's your first critical structure? What are you worried about when it comes to advancing that needle? So in this case, if we didn't want to injure our kidney needle, we would count one, two, three, four, five, say about six centimeters. And that's when we get to our first critical structure. So I'm going to go ahead and advance six centimeters. And I'm going to slide my needle holder up to the hub of my needle. So this lets me know exactly where my needle tip is at this moment. So if you take a look over here at our 1368, that's where you would position your table in order to find the tip at this moment. Or you can stop and do a full control scan. We're not here to change your practice. So whatever works for you, if you want to do a full scan or use CT fluoro, we've got that added benefit of letting you know where to position your table. Back out. So now that we know that we are about one, two, three centimeters from our target, we're gonna slide this back down to our skin and advance three centimeters. Two, three. And we're gonna do that same thing, slide it up, check the tip. If you are happy with this positioning for your procedure, you could go ahead and complete your procedure you can stop and do a final check scan to figure out where you're, exactly where that needle is to confirm it. Or if you wanted to move on to the distal end of your target, say if you were doing a thermal ablation and you needed to be at the distal end of it, we would count just shy of two centimeters, slide back down to the skin, and then advance about two centimeters, slide this needle holder back up and check our tip. So that's just kind of the standard way to use the CT navigation to, to place those needles. You can also use it for multi-needle procedures when you really need to get those needles as parallel as possible. For instance, we're going to save the trajectory of our current needle and we're going to kind of repeat those steps again. We're going to take a second needle, make sure it slides without resistance, And we're going to go back in and for the sake of time and space, I'm just going to kind of insert this needle um, as parallel as possible as I can get to the yellow one. So if I like how parallel that is, I'm going to save a new trajectory and kind of repeat those steps. Advance, slide to figure out exactly where that needle tip is at that moment, slide back down and continue to advance. You can also use this in combination with ultrasound. So you're advancing that needle real time with ultrasound and you're using CT navigation to confirm your critical structures. How close are you to the bowel? How close are you to anything that you want to avoid? Um, you can also use the system. It's very beneficial when you have a target that you're unable to see without contrast. So go ahead, perform your contrast scan, send either, either series over to the Amactus workstation 
And then you're able to do all of your pre-planning with a beautifully highlighted target. Um, one of the cool, cool features of this system is that the more physicians use it, the more they find ways to use it. Um, so it's really cool to kind of get the feedback from our physicians and figure out exactly what they're using CT navigation for. Um, and thank you for your time.